It's Sunday, the 27th of October, 2024. Welcome to another Sunday live session here with myself, Ivan Olovic, on Earthworks Hub. Uh, thank you to everyone that's joined. We've got people on here from Instagram and TikTok. I can see a whole bunch of people coming on. The good news is for everyone on TikTok, I don't have guests. We ha actually had a couple of guests lined up. Um, they have unfortunately not been able to make it. So I'm going to have um, both TikTok and Instagram going for the whole session. So good news for everyone on TikTok. And I can see a lot of people have joined. Let's give a couple of shout outs here. We've got Greenway Contracting, Mr. UCBC, Nielsey, Morgs, um, Russell Palmer, Harry Dant, News, Newson Construction, Deluxe Landscaping, Jay Panem, Panem, Breakout Excavations, Daryl, oh man, we've got, uh, who else is there here, we've got down here, Carol, Mark, Jim, a whole bunch of people, another Jim, another Hendy, so a lot of people on, thank you to everyone that has made the effort to come in and watch the episode. Like I said, we were going to have two guests on here tonight. Unfortunately, both couldn't make it. Um, some things have come up. But it happens. What do you do? What do you do? Is that GPS guy has joined as well. Hello. All right. Top up your drinks. We're going to be here for an hour as usual. Um, get yourselves comfortable. Strap in. It's going to be a big night. A couple of big things that um, I'm announcing. So let's get ready. Ah, all right, here we go. Well, the biggest thing is, I suppose, let me talk about these babies. So you probably all saw my post during the week. These are two Savage sunglasses. So I've teamed up and become an affiliate with these guys. Two Savage offer regular sunglasses and safety glasses. Um, so the safety ones are very similar, except they have a side, little side protection flap here on each side. Um, and they've got different standards. So all their glasses are polarized, UV 400. Um, the actual safety ones, uh, all they meet all the Australian New Zealand standard, um, uh, what do you call it, the standards. They're shatter resistant. They have the side protection, like I said, and they're tax deductible. So make sure you get yourself a pair of these for the work site, and you won't get told off for looking cool because they actually are meeting all the Australian standards. So if anyone questions them when you come to site, you can actually take take them to the Two Fat Savage site and they can have a look and all the details will be on there. So yeah, get yourself some of these bad boys. I got the purple ones mainly because my car, my car, the, the purple Tirana, I don't know if you saw those posts. If you didn't, go and have a look on my uh, Instagram profile or TikTok. But I've got a Holden LC Tirana. It's purple, very similar color to these. And I made a video during the week of me standing next to it. So, um, yeah, I seem to get a lot of good feedback on that. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you do want to get yourself a pair of these, because I'm an affiliate now, you can get a discount. So use the code EWORKSHUB10. So um, on Diggerlid and, and Hard Hat Watches, it's just EWORKSHUB. But with uh, 2 Savage, it's EWORKSHUB10. So go on to, you can either go on my website, www.earthworkshub.com.au, click on the 2Savage link and it will take you there and then you can just type in eWorksHub10 or you can go straight to 2Savage.com. Anyway, awesome, awesome glasses. Um, I don't know, should I leave them on for the rest of the evening or what? Someone here saying they've got the same, same ones. Sam saying he's got the same pair and he loves them. So yeah, it's good to know, man. It seems like a lot of people have these and um, now I know why. So... Thank you to Two Savage for partnering up with Earthworks Hub. While we're on that topic, um, I'm going to have to say a quick shout out to all my other sponsors. So that is MOBA Australia, uh, Network Finance, Bolle Group, Melbourne Tractors, Goddings, uh, Spartan Machinery, Next Gen Earthworks and Landscaping, JR Safety Co, Digger Lead, Digger, uh, Earth Moving Warehouse. And then, yeah, Two Savage Hard Hat Watches. Make sure you go onto their site and use my codes to get yourself some discounts, man. Um, I can see people asking questions already. That's good. Keep reserve those questions. Let me uh, do a couple of things and do some, you know, the, the main things I usually do. And then we can get into the questions. But keep that, keep that in mind. Uh, who was that? Sash. Yep, keep that question in mind. That's a good one. 
Um, what else? All these episodes, if you don't get a chance to stay for the whole uh, session and you want to catch up on something or you miss something and you want to go back to it, I do record these, post them up. You can go and see these on Spotify. You can see them on uh, YouTube and Apple Podcast. So go and see those on there. Or if you just want audio, there's also an um, audio version on YouTube as well. Um, but you probably want to do the uh, video version so you can see me. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? This week, I did an interview with Blessos. So Blessos Earthworks, awesome, awesome young man from... Um, it's near Yapoon. I don't know if you guys know where Yapoon is in Queensland. But um, it's called Emerald. So he comes from a place called Emerald in Queensland. And has a, uh, like a small... He's an owner-operator. Has a, a five-tonner, um, a posi track, and like a little Kubota tractor and a little truck. And he was telling us about his business, how he started, um, especially being a young fella. Good for people that want to know how to get into the industry. And you can um, get some information from that video. If um, you didn't manage to see it, go and have a look at it. Um, bless those earthworks. So his name's Sweden. And you'll see during the actual podcast, I asked him about that name because I was saying, I've never really heard of that name. It's a very unusual one. So um, apparently his family has named all the kids after different countries. So yeah, go go see that episode and you'll see a bit more information about that. Uh, Prime, Prime Earthworks is saying the boss is rocking the sunnies. You like the sunnies? That's it, man. I gotta, I gotta promote all my sponsors now. That's it. But they are good, man. They are. Somebody actually rang me during the week and said, "Can you tell me your opinion on them? Because I'm gonna go buy some." So just tell me as a mate, not as a salesman. And I said they're actually pretty good, man. They are. They are good. So they do actually do what they're meant to do. I'm still getting used to that polarized, that polarized uh, look. You know, when you look through the polarized glasses, they they give a little bit of a different um, perspective on things. So they they make them look a little bit odd. But um, I'm getting used to it, and I actually I like them. So, no, good, good, awesome glasses, man. So make sure you go and see that episode with Blessos Earthworks, and thank you to Blessos for coming on. Um, oh, and Prime Earthworks is saying he's on grade, by the way, and just changed his name. Ah, oh, there you go. Change the old name, huh? There you go. All right. Um, so like I said, they're all posted up, so you can always go back and have a look. And... Also, don't forget that you can list your business on my Earthworks Hub uh, page. So a lot of people have been listing on there recently. Go on, list your business on there so that everyone can find you and use your services. So just today I had someone tell me that they've been getting phone calls from the website. So it actually is working. Um, so if anyone had any doubts, they are actually getting phone calls. So put your information in there and you will be able to. So list your business on there and you'll be able to get more work out of it. All right, Matthew Goldsmith is saying, I'm with Cat Central Australia. Welcome, Matthew. Ah, oh, Alex has joined as well, man. How are you going, Alex? All right, so they're the sponsors. I do, so I do want some specific guests. I am looking for a traffic management guest and a float or a low loader guest. So I really want to bring someone on to talk about traffic management and the issues they have because a lot of people say, oh, it's easy to be a lollipop person, just stand there, stop and go. And, um, you know, you get paid mega bucks for standing there. But I want someone from traffic management to come on and tell us what it's really like, what their days consist of, how their work is. Because I've seen it and I've done it firsthand. I've been tra doing the traffic management every now and then to jump in. And I'll tell you what, man, it's not as easy as what people think. So, um, yeah, I'd really like to get someone from traffic management on. If you know someone or if you're in traffic management, whether you're a worker or have your business or whatever, um, Give me a message and I will get you on to the show. Also, I want someone from a float company or a low loader or someone that moves tra um, transports machinery because I'd really like everyone to hear what they go through as well. So what their process is, how they um, you know, deal with customers and how they deal with people when they come to pick up machines and stuff. Because I've had some situations where um, my... Uh, float drivers have had to pick up machines like five, six in the morning and make all this noise and have been yelled at and stuff. So it'd be interesting to see what happens with float drivers. You know, how many times they've blocked off roads and been yelled at and stuff like that. So I just want to know, and some of their pet hates and that, because I can imagine they get to jobs, go to pick up a machine that's covered in mud, tracks aren't cleaned. It'd be very interesting to hear um, their opinions. 
Yeah, some Prime Earth was you saying uh, Pickering Brett. You should get him on. Yeah, there you go, man. Well, hit him up, man. If you can't, if you can't, um, if you can't get them to call me, or if I if I don't if they don't call me, then you can get them to call me. So yeah, just uh, convince them because I've put the feelers out and I haven't had much feedback from the two those two um, specific guests that I want. So yeah, there you go. So Pickering Brett is what Prime Earthwork is saying, and get someone from Trafman Solutions. There you go. So it's good. Thank you. Thanks for the uh, advice, guys. Uh, we've got some comments here. Hang on. So Jet Dylan saying he's got a question. Give me one second. I'll get back to you. And Matthew Goldsmith is saying you cannot hope to build a better world without improving the individuals of the world, making an amazing change in people's lives and changing the world. In order we stand divided. I have no idea what he just wrote. Matthew, but thank you for that spiel. Okay, anyway, back to the program. So, yeah, so big announcements to Savage. Actually, I just want to smell this box again, man. I don't know if you guys saw that video, but these boxes, when you when they come, everyone says they always smell nice, and <laughs> it does, man. Is that Chanel? I think that's, that smells like a Chanel. It smells like an aftershave I had once. Anyway, two savage glasses, man. They do. They do smell really good. I can vouch for that. All right. Um, and Sash is asking, what machines do you run? All right. Huge, huge announcements. Um, Project Spalding. You've all seen me build that from ground up. Project Spalding has been complete. I have a tenant. I cannot release who it is yet, but I have a tenant. And there's going to be a big announcement. Um, I will wait a couple of weeks and then I'll be able to tell you more. But keep your eyes peeled. The big announcement coming for Project Spalding. Um, and then current jobs are going to be going to that basement in Eaglemont where I was working on the Case CX145. I'm going back to that job. So a lot of people who watched me during the day on my live sessions working there. So, <laughs> Kiwi and Cairns, very funny, man. I like it. Uh Current job, yeah, I'm going to be going back to Eaglemont this week to do a couple of days, and then I am off. We are going, we have a Melbourne Cup weekend, and we're going to be off going to um, caravanning, so can't wait for that. Holland Earthworks is saying, evening legends, how are you going, Holland? All right, somebody here is asking questions. So what I might do, I won't go any further with my stuff. I'll start answering these questions because I don't want to lose momentum with these people while they're asking but i do want to make another big announcement spotify um it's been nearly a year since i started this podcast and on spotify i have just reached ten thousand plays on spotify so that's another big big achievement for myself um, i wasn't sure how big this was going to get but um yeah i got a note from uh, spotify the other day saying congratulations i had ten thousand plays to date so um, thank you to all the listeners. Thank you to everyone that comes and listens to my programs, whether they're on Spotify or YouTube or you know Facebook, TikTok. Every, all the all the input I get from everyone and um, feedback and likes and follows all helps. So thank you very much. And I can see a whole bunch of love hearts going up the screen here. So thank you to everyone that is liking my stuff. Okay, Moba has joined. Moba the pizza man. All right, here we go. So I'll start answering some questions and then um, I'll continue on with my stuff. So let's go back here. I don't want to miss anyone. So I'm just going back on the Instagram screen. So excuse my uh, hands covering the screens. So Sash was asking originally, what is my favorite machine brand? I have answered this in previous episodes and I'm going to probably answer it the same way. I don't have one particular favorite brand, but I do have um, particular brands that I like in different sizes. And different machines so you know like for instance in in like small 1.8 ton machines i can say i like like the kubota u17 in like the three ton machines i can say i like maybe like a cat you know three ton then in like even the three and a half ton uh, kubota is a good machine in the five tonners i've mainly been in kubotas so i'm probably going to say kubota but i have used other ones so something like a a U fifty uh U fifty five. A PC fifty five, like a like a Kamatsu five and a half. Also pretty good, nice and comfortable. 
Uh, 15 tonners, I've had Cabelco SK135s. Cabelco was good, but also the case is very, very nice to, nice to sit in as well. Um, even the Komatsu PC-130 with a tail on it that I've been sitting on lately, that's actually pretty good for a 13, 14 ton range. And then, yeah, Cabelco's for the 20s and in the 30s, probably a case or a cat again. So, yeah, it depends. All different sizes. In the posi tracks, the cat, the cat is probably the most comfortable. Kubota's probably good value for money. Um, yeah, there's different ones. Because I've, tr I've had a lot of different machines and sat in a lot, um, I've probably got like a big versatile range of um, machine brands that I like. So hopefully I've answered your question, Sash. Jet Dylan, you can ask a question as well. Let me scroll, scroll, scroll. Sash is asking what machines do you run? So I probably just gave you a quick rundown of that, Sash, sorry. Uh, I've had a lot of different uh, machines. So at the moment, though, I have actually no machines. I just got rid of all the machines, all my equipment. Um, Kiwi in Kansas is saying 100% cat for CTLs. So yes, now I have to agree. The, the, cat, the cat is very, very good with their compact track loader. So I have to agree. Um, I don't run any machines at the moment. So now lately what I've been doing is focusing on my media. So I'm doing all these social media, podcasting, doing the website, trying to help everyone, doing product reviews, um, doing all these sponsorships. I've got a couple of big things that I'm going to be announcing as well. So I'm always announcing big stuff, but uh, there is, there's always something happening. I don't sit still. Um, so at the moment, no, I'm not running any machines. I'm just jumping in machines for other people when they need me uh, just to keep the cash flow and then also focusing on this stuff. So that's another answer for you, Sash. Uh, Jet Dylan, what skid steer do you recommend? I probably just answered that in... Um, without even knowing it. But um, look, you know what? Out of all the ones I've had, I've had ASVs, Terex, I've had a Kubota, I've had the Cat, I've sat in the Bobcat, I've sat in a Case um, track loader, I've sat in a um, New Holland. I have to say the Cat is very, very comfortable. For me, I found it the most comfortable and ref most refined and, and responsive. However, I just sat in the Kubota SVL 75-3, and that was very nice. I have to admit, that was also very nice. But the Bobcat is also another very good machine. Um, the VT70, I think it was, I sat in, the ASV VT70. Very, very, very nice machine. Very nice machine. I just do worry a little bit about maintenance on those on those undercarriages. But still very good. So, yeah, the ASV25, not too bad as well. Uh, Jet Dylan, not too bad. I had an RC30, which is the older version of that, I think. And then... It was a bulletproof little machine, but also some issues with um, the, um, what do you call it? The tracks and stuff, you know, and the, the bearings and stuff. You always have to keep greasing them up. So that drive line is probably a little bit unpredictable. Um, what's the most reliable brand? Maui is asking. That is a very, very good question. Uh, someone's asking me here again. Just jokes. What's with the sunnies? Uh, if you just joined, you probably haven't heard. These guys are now affiliated with myself, so I've just put them on for this episode just to show everyone and produce a talking point, which is working because you're all picking up on it. Um, going back to Moe's question, the most reliable brand? Oh, man, very, very, very hard to say. All these machines and that nowadays are pretty reliable. Um, it probably all comes down to the service that you can get out of those companies. How quick can they come back to you and fix things when they need to? So I don't know. It's a, that's it's a hard question. They're all they've all got their ups and downs, man. Um, probably anything that's got le least the least moving parts is probably the best. Uh, Kiwi in Kansas is saying ASV is a good machine. I've owned uh, 30s, 60s, 70s. So yeah, so Kiwi in Kansas is saying just be careful that you're not wrecking the undercarriage. Yeah, so you, that's what it basically is. Yeah, and don't let it get two chockers under the under the um in the tracks so jet dylan hopefully that answers your questions about the asv moe talk about the warehouse you built is it all finished yeah moe so i just made a bit of an announcement on that um i have finished that so project spalding is complete the warehouse is all done put electric gates on the other day um the sparky is come actually come back because my new tenant wants to have aircon and cameras and stuff and I have a new tenant that's coming in that, and there's going to be a big announcement about that very, very shortly. So that project's balding, all done, man. 
All right. So, hopefully I answered some of those questions there. I can't, I'm scrolling as I'm talking, and I can't see any more, so that's good. And Kiwi in Kansas, going back to the ASV comment, yeah, he's saying just be careful that you're not filling um, the undercarriage with rocks and stones. Yeah, because then they crush every, they they crush and crunch under the um under those little the little rollers. Uh, Benji boy, hey hey brother, how you going, Benji boy? Hopefully you love these glasses. I'm rocking the old two savage sunny tonight, just so that everyone can see uh, what's on offer when you go on and use my code to buy some. And also, don't forget hard hat watches, man. Go and have a look, and you see the watches I got too, man. Uh, Maui is saying, what's your, what's your opinion on the Cat C15 in trucks? Ooh, okay. The Cat Motors, and thank you for the likes as well, people. I can see people giving me likes down in uh, TikTok as well. Brighton Thomas, I think it is. It is. Good old Brighton. Um, sorry, going back to Maui. What's your opinion on the Cat C15 in trucks? I haven't driven a truck with the Cat engine in it. Um, but I do hear from other guys that they're very, very good. So I haven't heard anything bad about them. Um, Sydney Rockwall is saying C15s are a great engine. So there you go. So maybe, yeah, maybe some other people can also um, give their opinions. But so far, I've only heard good stuff. Yeah, I haven't really heard anything bad about the, the cat engines. Has anyone seen that cat concept ute? There's a, there's a four-wheel drive ute that they've made like a yellow... Uh, it's like a concept car, and it's a it's a caterpillar one. That it looks amazing, man. And they're saying like, who wants one, or should we build one? If that cat you came out, I'll tell you what, man, I reckon it'd be a hit. So um, I don't know. Has anyone else seen that? Oh, the Kiwi and Cairns saying a Ford Ranger. It does look like a Ranger. I think they've based it on a Ranger and then just turned it into a cat thing. But um, that looks awesome. That little concept car. Yeah, Brighton Thomas is saying you've seen it. There you go. Ascend Earthworks. Thanks for joining. And uh, on-site civil group is saying, yeah, the C15 is the best engine. Very, very good. So a lot of people giving their opinions on that. And that it's re they're reliable as well. That's good. Um, Maui is saying a cat ute looks like a Lamborghini. <laughs> yeah, true. Uh, they actually look good, but the ute doesn't look too bad at all. Apparently, Kia are going to bring out their new ute soon. I'll be uh, keen to see that. Be very, very keen to see that new Kia one. Uh, so Nielsey is saying just old and hard to find low kilometers so I think he's talking about the Cat C15 motor again um, thanks for joining Bobcat guy yeah so oh and the big dog as well is on very good to see ya yeah so Nielsey is saying that um, yeah they're old and hard to find with low kilometers yeah so um, yeah no, so far all I've heard is good stories about the Cat motors yeah alright so, Cabalco Hayden has joined. How are you going, Hayden? Good to see you. Thanks for joining this evening. So, we've been covering a couple of topics, people. Actually, Cabalco Hayden could probably answer a lot of those ASV questions. Um, a couple of people are asking about the ASV. Um, someone was asking about the ASV 25. So, maybe, maybe you can give uh, some opinions on that because these guys sell the ASVs. So, um, thanks for joining Hayden. Good timing, man. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to hate me for putting you on the spot, but uh, thank you for joining. Um, okay, so while people are typing their questions, I'm going to actually talk about, actually my son bought an e-bike today. One of those mountain bikes with a little um, bolt-on <laughs> on-site civil saying, love the glasses. Thank you, brother. Um, yeah, my son bought an e-bike today, man. Now, I'll tell you what, after sitting on it and going around the block, I actually want to get one myself now. So, I don't know, I don't know if anyone else here has an e-bike. Um, just uh, let me know what you think. Is it worth getting one? Because, um, yeah, I'm really, really considering to get one now. His is a 1,500 kilowatt one. So, apparently, they go all the way up to 5,000 kilowatts. But uh, even the 1,500, bloody, the, the thing flies. So, um, yeah, I think nowadays, I think dirt bikes are going to get the flick, man. They're, all these kids are going to be going on these e-bikes. Anyway, but now I'm really keen on getting to get one. Um, Cabalco Hayden has made a comment. On the ASV, the perfect little machine, 
to tow around some stock floating around now as well. So there you go. So they've got stock of those. Yeah, so I think the ASV25 is probably the biggest one you can put on the trailer. Is that right? Um, I think they're the, they're, that's the maximum size you can put on the trailer, which is good if you don't want to have to buy yourself a little truck and you still want to just tow a little machine around. Uh, that is probably a good thing. Does the ASV25 reach into a tandem? That's what I'd like to know. Um, I don't, my old uh, RC30 couldn't reach into, an, into a normal size tandem or a bogey like some people call them. So um, I wonder if the 25 can do that. Uh, Ascend Earthworks is saying some mates have them and love them. Yeah, the e-bikes. He's talking. He's talking about the e-bikes. I'm jumping between topics. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, Ascend Earthworks is saying some of his mates have got e-bikes and they love them. Yeah, I reckon. I tell you what, man. Because I was considering buying a dirt bike for my son, and then after seeing this e-bike, I don't know, man. I reckon that um, it's probably cheaper and easier just to get an e-bike, and you can go on the road on anywhere. Uh, Kiwi in Kansas saying he used to be able to tow a ASV30 on a trailer. There you go. So you, oh, yeah, you can. I think you can, yeah. But I, I think the 25 has replaced the 30. Is that right? I can't, I, I'm not sure. Maybe Hayden can um, answer that. And then somebody said something up here. Uh, Kabelka Hayden said, up to an RT50 now with a light 3.5 ton trailer. So you can even put an RT50 on on the three and a half ton trailer wow there you go yeah so is the RT the same as is the RT the same as um, a PT60 or a PT50 in the old days oh yeah so Kabelka Hayden saying that ASV25 will, will not be able to load a tandem but the RT50 will now while people are also um, th thinking of some questions I hope you all enjoyed last week's episode. So we we kicked off the new segment called Maintenance Matters. And that's where um, I get Aaron from Definitive Contracting to come on. And so they're basically like diesel mechanics or heavy, heavy mechanics. And they he's coming on and answering people's questions about maintenance. So every every few weeks, I'm going to get Aaron back on. And he's going to talk about various topics and then we're going to open up to people's questions. So already during the week, some people have hit me up with a couple of questions, um, which we're working on. So we're going to work on answering those for you. And then we're going to bring them back up in the next episode. So in a couple of weeks, I'll have Aaron back on. But also during the weekdays, we're working on doing some videos and doing little video uh, clips of basic maintenance procedures and stuff. So um, you should see a few things coming up. And every time he finds, um, as they're working, if he finds something very interesting, he'll record it and post it up for us. So that should be should be very, very interesting. All right. Oh, actually, you guys have just made me think of something. What I want to do is I want to start like a little, um, oh, I don't know what you want to call it. I don't know what you want to call it. Well, let's think of it as I talk about it. But I don't know about most of you guys, but I am a chronic nail biter. So I bite my nails a lot. And I notice a lot of guys in our industry have got um, short nails. Like a lot of us pick our nails, bite them. Even though despite working with grease and uh, dirt and stuff all day, we still manage to somehow bite our nails. And I, I'm constantly getting told off by my wife and my kids. They're always like, Dad, stop doing, stop biting your nails. So the kids are actually telling me off. Um and then my, my wife always says to me, you're a 40-year-old grown-ass man, you're still biting nails. So what I want to do is like a little bit of a challenge. So I want to challenge myself and see if I can stop biting. So you know how we have Movember and people like grow their mustache for the month and stuff? What about we do like a little challenge and a few of us, you know, whoever else has the same issue with their nails, get together and we actually take like regular shots of our fingernails and show how we improve and try not to bite them just to give ourselves a bit of a goal do you who, who'd be in for that and who who else is a nail biter here who else has like nails like this they're absolutely shocking yeah anybody anybody else on here have similar nails jpg excavations bhm plant thank you for joining thank you very much I was just saying that I want to do like a little challenge and challenge myself not to bite my nails. So I'm thinking maybe we do like a little like a little challenge for 
everyone in our industry and say, um, let's you know grow them for maybe for a month and say, let's see how they go for a month. On-site civil, mine only grow while I'm on holidays. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly right, man. We went overseas for a while last year and I came back and my nails were long as, it's, it's so true because I wasn't focused on work and thinking. I reckon that's what it is. It's when I'm, I get it when I'm like sitting and thinking about something or sometimes when I'm driving in the car, I just start picking my nail, then I'll pick the next one and then that, it just keeps happening. Whereas when you're on holidays, you're just busy and you, and you just don't get time to, to actually sit and do that. So yeah, you're right, man. And probably a bit more relaxed. And I think when we go in the water and we're out in the sun, and they, I think they just grow better. I don't know what it is. But um, yeah, you're right. I think. And then if you chip it a little bit while you're working, then you start picking it when it's chipped and then it just keeps getting worse. And then you go down to the skin and it's sore. So I don't know. Who's with me? Does anyone else have that? Um, and who'd be interested in doing this challenge? I don't know if we make it. Do we make it an actual competition? Earth Excavations, how are you going? Oh, look who's joined. The man, the myth, the legend. Thank you for joining, man. I believe um, he's, this could be the first live session that he has attended. So thank you for joining. I hope you've got your cup filled up and ready. We're just talking about different machines. So we're talking about what type of posi tracks. A lot of people were talking about the ASV um, posi tracks. We had a lot of questions on that. Um, what else did we talk about? We talked about a few different things. Uh, any other topics, guys? Let's talk. Let's talk while we're on here. Let's go. So yeah, while we're talk while we're sitting here waiting, don't forget to go to www.earthworkshub.com.au and list your business on there. I've got tip sites on that site. So if you want to find yourself a tip site, you're stuck on a job somewhere and you're thinking, where am I going to tip this material? You go to Earthworks Hub, um, click on tip sites and you'll find a list of different tip sites on there. So and if you've got a tip site that's not on there, add one in. You can add it in, it's free. Just add the tip site on so everybody knows where it is. Um, and if you can, even add details. I've added on there their prices, what material they take, their opening hours and all that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, double double check um, if the tip site is on there first before you add one in. And if it's not, then you can add your one in. And then also, yeah, list your businesses on there. If you've got events, all that sort of stuff, um, yeah, go on and do that. Ooh, ooh, what's the best MOBA? Here we go. Ascend Earthworks is saying, what's the best MOBA system for small projects like residential? And of all times, perfect timing, Jack Healy has joined as soon as a MOBA question comes up. It's like he knew. Jack you can answer that question here we go he's answering already MOBA 3D he's saying there you go the MOBA 3D system is what Jack recommends and the reason I, I um, said that Ascend is because Jack has the MOBA system he's running their systems at the moment so he'd be the best person to answer those questions um, so Jack you reckon the MOBA 3D so what is that is that just like a, a little screen that they've got or well, what's that excite thing i've seen as well is it the same thing i've seen they sell an excite pro product and for anyone as well that um wants to know more about moba there will be a podcast coming up very very shortly um with moba so i'm sure during that podcast we're going to find out a lot more about moba um but uh yeah there you go so for residential jack is saying the moba 3d system is probably the best system and Cody in TikTok is saying, I just subbed to your YouTube. Well done, man. Thank you. Mitchell, is that Wolfer? Let me, these bloody sunnies. Let me take them off. Hang on. Ah, oh, I can actually see. Anyway, that's enough promo for two, Savage. I'm taking them off, guys. All right. Um, Mitchell Wooler. Mitchell Wooler is saying, what's next for you? Project Spalding is done. Um, that is going to be part of my announcement. So Project Spalding is done, but there is some more stuff beyond that, um, which I can't say at the moment, but we are going to be announcing something big about Project Spalding in particular very, very soon. So keep your eyes peeled. Um, so at the moment, yeah, I am going to be focusing on this stuff, um, but there will be some more stuff coming. 
Uh, MOBA has jumped in to answer the question. Um, and that was from Next Step Earthworks as well. So MOBA is saying a few good options starting from our Pro Magnetic Receiver with a tilt compensation. So that's good. So MOBA is saying, yeah, you can um, look at the Pro Magnetic Receiver. And the next step up is the Excite Easy 2D system. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, the Excite system I saw um, in their pamphlets and that on their website. And Ascend is saying, I'll talk to you guys. Yeah, that's it, man. So if you are looking um, for a MOBA system, talk to the MOBA guys. And if you need some advice, I'm sure Jack would uh, be happy to give you some more advice on MOBA. Um, and Jack has actually answered in the meantime. I like 3D because there's... BO setup. Oh, there's no setup, no lasers, no nothing. Just, just get into it from the cabin. But he did start with a magnetic receiver. Oh, okay, yeah. So Jack's probably saying if you're gonna do it, just go straight to the 3D. Um, but if you can't afford to go straight to 3D, maybe you need to start with, um, yeah, uh, just a receiver. And yeah, and Moba's saying ascend. Just give him a PM. So I'm sure Moba will help you out, man. So that's good. That's good, man. We're connecting people together which is all part of the plan. That is what Earthworks Hub is about, trying to get everybody together, networking, um, you know, giving people options, giving you know, people advice, hearing what other people are up to and that. So it's working. It's good. Even if you just saw a post from Terra Pro yesterday and today, he got in touch with one of my other guests that I had, from Alex from ADM, and Alex has helped him buy himself a tandem. So like things... Things are happening. People are connecting, and I'm so happy to be a part of that. You know that that connection and helping people achieve and get stuff. So, yeah, whatever you need, guys. If you need help with something, you can bring it up during these sessions, or you can text me or send me a message, um, or an email, and we'll try and help. We'll try and help each other out. Any advice or anything like that, you know. So that's what we are happy to do. Hmm. That's the other thing I forgot to say. People are buying merch. So I noticed on my merch store, I get a, like a little tracking system. People are actually buying merch. So thank you to all the guys and girls, whoever it is, buying the um, merch. Just one thing, if you do buy the merch, please ensure that you do post it up. Let everyone see what you've got. You know, display your support for Earthworks Hub and hopefully that will inspire others to do it. So... Thank you to all those people that have been making purchases. This has been very popular. So the bucket hat has been one of the hot items on the um, store. So if you want to get yourself an Earthworks Hub bucket hat, go to earthworkshub.com.au, go to the shop, and you can buy yourself one of those bucket hats. They're actually pretty good. I'll wear that. I do wear that during the day um, because I've started wearing bucket hats because my ears are getting crispy. The top of my ears I've noticed recently are actually like crispy because I'm always outside, always with a hat on and the ears stick out and the top of them is getting crispy. And Actually, my left one is actually starting to get a bit sore. I should go get that checked out. Um, and also, um, people are using the codes. So, the actual um, discount codes for DiggerLid, I actually saw today another person bought something from DiggerLid, so I get like a report sent to me. And it says that someone bought something again. So, well done, man. I'm happy to see people are using the code, getting discounts. Um, who else? Somebody bought a watch the other day. So, people are using the codes. And <laughs> uh, people are using the code. Sorry, I'm laughing because guys are like sending messages to each other. Um, yeah, people are using the code. So, that's good, man. I'm glad to see people are getting, and getting the discounts and using um, the Earthworks Hub code. So Moby is saying, is anyone coming to Bauma next year? And Jack has put his hand up, He's saying hello. I actually um, have recently been invited to go to Bauma in China. And I decided not to go. Uh, I just feel like I've got, it's not the right time for me. I've got so much to do at the moment that I can't afford to just sort of go. Uh, and I don't want to go there and be like half-hearted. I want to go, and if I'm going to go, I want to be in it and record the whole thing and talk to different stands and look at new products so i feel like at the moment i've got too much i'm spread too thin and i've got some other big projects coming up 
so I don't want to go. But um, I wouldn't mind. Maybe maybe I'll go to the Germany one. I don't know. Um, Jack and I were talking about that the other day. So what is Bauma? Ascend Earthworks is saying Bauma. Bauma is a massive expo. So it's a massive fair that they hold. Um, they've got one. In, I know they've got it in China and Germany. I don't know if they've got it anywhere else. But um, they, they come out and they have a massive expo apparently. And other people can correct me if I'm wrong. Apparently it's huge. They have like all types of uh, construction industry machines there. And um, yeah, Jack's saying it's the world's biggest construction expo. It's in Munich. Um, and Mobo is saying the original German Bauma is the only one to attend. Yeah. So Mobo, yeah, that's it. So that's that's the other reason I didn't want to attend the China one. I feel like maybe it's better just to wait and go to the actual German one. But um, I didn't even know China has one. Somebody just told me about it the other day and said, you want to go? And I was like, uh, I'm probably not ready to go right now. But um, you never know. You never know. I might end up there. Morgs is saying, what up? What's up, Morgs? So, yeah, the TikTokers have been very, very quiet. Very, very quiet. So, um, don't forget, guys, you're also involved. And Ascend is saying, the more you know, the more you know. Well, nah, he'll be he'll be working. So, uh, or he or she, I shouldn't say that. Um, so, Ascend will be working, unfortunately, yeah. Nah, it's, um, yeah, big, big event, man. Big, big event. There you go. So um, yeah, no, that's that's supposed to be like a massive, massive event. So it's like diesel dirt and turf on steroids. Is that is that fair to say? Yeah, diesel dirt and turf on major steroids. Uh, anyway, uh, what else was there, guys? We're looking for a location. If anyone has a lo a location where they think we can do a bit of a expo ourselves in Melbourne hit me up send me a message cuz uh we're looking at doing like a little mini expo ourselves so it's something that we brought up a few weeks back probably start off as a bit of a not a joke but we just sort of spoke about it and now it's sort of growing into reality so we're looking for a location where we can have multiple um brands turn up machines all types of different equipment people can sit in them trial them have a go um, we, I know that there's a few companies on here that are very interested in attending so if we can actually get it to happen it will be a big event um, so something that's starting off small could actually turn big uh, someone was saying we call it HubCon which you never know it could be but um, yeah if anyone wants to tell us about a site somewhere that we can actually have you know like posi tracks that we can somewhere we, we've got enough room and material that we can move around with posi tracks and excavators without you know make it disturbing too much um, of their site let us know we can actually uh, make it happen yeah Matt Goldsmith the only thing is we don't want to go too regional yeah so he's saying he's offering his land in Leangatha thank you man but we don't really want to go too 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 regional we want to sort of keep it more metro Melbourne if we can or sort of just the outer suburbs of Melbourne Jack Healy saying I'm told caterpillars stand at Bauma alone costs thirty million dollars to set up. Wow, that is a huge investment. So that just goes to show you, if Cat is willing to spend thirty million um, on their stand, well, that just goes to show you how big the actual event is for them. Uh, Mitchell Wooler is saying, "What are my thoughts on if you should focus on one specific type of work?" Or have machines doing all different types of work? That's a good question, man. Mitchell, that is a good question. So I think what you're saying is basically, do you focus on just doing, you know, like digging, you know, trenches for concreters or, or slab slab work or retaining walls? Or do you just focus on just civil and, and have your machines on civil? Is that right? Am I Am I sort of going down the right path? Or do you just spread your machines everywhere? I can I can actually tell you how that works. So I used to spread my machines everywhere. So I had my machines with multiple agencies. I had multiple customers. So I had some builders, some concreters, some plumbers. Um, and Mitchell saying, yeah, that's exactly what he meant. So I had my machines spread everywhere. Um, it was good in one way because we always had something to, to work on. 
but bad because we didn't focus on one thing and specialize. And I actually had that chat with Sydney Rockwalls and I was saying like, is it better to just spe- specialize in something like just, and sometimes I thought maybe we'll just specialize in retaining walls. Um, and where's UCBC? Is he still on? I don't know if he's on, but UCBC does like all well, those block walls. I think if you focus on one thing, it's probably good because you can focus and get your machines to specifically for that type of work. And get it, get them set up, and then you know you're do, doing just that, like piling, or or um, if you're doing retaining walls, you know you know you need like machines that can backfill screenings, machines that can drill, you know all that sort of stuff. It's hard to say though, because yeah, what happens, and this is what Sydney Rockwall said as well. What happens when there's a downturn in that work? Then you got to go out and look for something else. So sometimes you might get stuck and not be able to do anything else. So maybe spreading yourself is a good thing but um i also found that then i was like all over the place when i was spread so um it was a good learning curve because i had to learn how to do everything i had to learn how to do concrete trenches and how to do board piers then i had to learn how to be a plumber and dig on grade then we had to learn how to do retaining walls so we're doing everything and it was good because we knew how to do everything so then everyone was calling us um so in one way it keeps it keeps it makes it so that you can keep working. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Matthew Goldsmith is saying he has another depot in ca- in the capital's territory or Hawthorne. Yeah, there you go. Maybe uh, maybe send me a PM or a DM, whatever you call it. Send me some some private messages about some locations, man. It might work. And Morgs. Fergie is saying, do you think blokes need to be up to date with things like GPS and other things in the job? I think you're right. I think, uh, Morgs, I think we need to be more up to date with GPS because I'm one, I can I can um, put my hand up for this. I'm no expert in GPS. I haven't spent that much time on it. I think I've just stepped out um, just in time that I don't need to... Um, need to like know too much about it sort of thing like i'm not using it where i am i'm on that i'm in that last category of guys operators that can just help people out when they need me and not and avoid using gps and stuff like they just put me on jobs just load trucks for the day just go dig trenches you know like i'm doing the easy stuff at the moment so i probably avoided having to use gps but i think if i continue on and stay with machinery and start doing keep doing my own jobs it's inevitable that we're going to need gps and that man because it's just going to happen. It's just going to be expected eventually. And Ascend is agreeing. Yeah, Ascend Earthworks is saying he thinks it's the future. Stephen Cardona, welcome. Thank you for joining, Mr. Cardona. Um, and Morgs is saying, yeah, so do those blokes need to learn? Which blokes are these, Morgs? Hang on. Are you talking about um, which blokes are we talking about here? Maybe I've missed something, sorry. Um, I'll wait for him to type. But yeah, it is. It is going to be the future, man. It's just like tilt hitches, tilt rotators. Things are coming. Things are coming. They're going to be like expected eventually. Um, and GPS is one of those. And I think people are seeing the benefits of it. Like as MOBA would, would be someone that, that can probably tell us that. Yeah, it's just going to be expected, man. Um, Chris Angelopoulos. Hello, Chris. What's going on? So we we're just talking about specializing in different things. Is it better to specialize or just have your machines everywhere? And I was saying that, um, you know, sometimes it's a good thing. Like if you can specialize in, in um, did I just knock my microphone out? Sorry, guys. So I'm a European. I talk with my hands. So I'm just knocking things out. Um, so yeah, so I think if you do specialize like in piling and stuff, um, you know, you sort of, you know how you want to set your business up and you get the the right, the right machinery, you get the right gear, the right staff according to what, what work you do. But um, if you're just spreading yourself everywhere, then you're sort of a, a, a bits of this, a bits of that. So, you know, you've got to just have it. Then all your workers have to be all-rounders, all your machines have to be all-rounders. Okay, I'm sort of jumping around, guys. I'm sorry about this. I'm just answering questions as they come up. So, thank you for joining as well, Lion Pumping and HPT Excavations. Um, MOBA is saying, yes, more and more customers 
uh, opting for technology to improve the workflow. Yeah, so I think more and more so it's going to be that way, that people just want GPS, man. And Prime Earthworks is saying, yeah, if you want to be a bits and pieces person, civil is probably a good place to go. And he's right, yeah, in the end I found that civil worked best for me because I could put my different types of machines onto civil sites and they'd keep running them. So I had my 13 tonner, my 20, my posi, my 5, everything was there. Like it was civil would just keep my machines moving, my tippers. So civil was good because it just, they were doing, they, they, they needed all those types of machines. Um, the only thing is then you become a slave to those guys, you know what I mean? Then they want you to do everything they want. All right, so HPT Excavations is saying, we do 90% of our work in swimming pool excavations, but it's not for everyone. And there you go. So yeah, so maybe maybe specializing in something is good because then you know that everyone's going to call you for that type of work, um, which is good. Yeah, digging pools, man. I swear a lot of people think it's easy, but it's not as easy as it seems. And a lot, a lot of times I found when I used to dig swimming pools is that you've got tight access, you've got to swing around, you've got the house, you've got the, you know, if you've got an existing house, you've got the house to look out for, you've got fencing around you, then you've got to take material from the front backyard to the front yard, load it into the tipper. Sometimes we used to pull up if there was nothing behind the house, we'd pull up the tipper near the fence, load over the over the fence, so I don't know if you've done the same thing, HPT, but yeah, we used to do that. We used to try and try and pull up the truck as close as we can to the rear fence or the side, and then with either the five or whatever machine we had, load over the fence straight into the truck, so to save us using a posi track to go to the back to the front. So um, yeah, the pools can be very, very, uh, ex very, very tight and hard to work with. And the Sand Earthworks is saying pools are hard work. Never good access, all credit to the pool guys. Yeah, so he's saying the same thing, man. Down in TikTok here, Prime Earthworks is saying, if anyone knows Simonic Earthworks, used to be in the civil game, now he's in the Goldie doing pools in the Gold Coast. Wow, is that where he's gone? Um, and Mitchell Woolley is saying, we have machines and trucks set up doing site cuts full time, but also machines doing general work. Yeah, and I've got some mates that do that. So they do... All they do is cart material for guys that do site cuts. So all they do is come and on meter rates just take away all the all the material, um, and especially for all these these um, high high production home builders, they take away all that sort of stuff. So uh, Tilney's Earthworks has just joined. I think um, yeah no Jack Jack has offered for us to use his uh, yard for the expo. Um, however, it is a bit of a distance out from the city. <laughs> Uh, Jack's telling him to get off the PC. There you go. My glass is nearly empty, man. So it must be close to nine. I try. It's funny. I try and sip this thing slowly to get till nine o'clock, uh, and I've made it. Funny, you've got a little bit left. Oh man, that's it. Finished. Okay. So what else is there? Um, it's a school night. They're saying. There you go. Plastrube is saying I should fill up. Yeah, I I can. My collection is just there. I actually just finished. That was a that was the Glenfiddich. So um, the other McConnells, whatever it was that I was having, I don't know. I wasn't a big fan of that Irish whiskey. Um, I think Jamison's the best Irish one, or that tea tea ling, whatever it's called. But um, yeah, Glenfiddich's doing doing not too bad. Um, Matt Goldsmith is saying you need a large yard, and I have many. There you go. Thank you, Matt. And Mitchell is saying, was wondering why you're early tonight, then realized you're on daylight savings. Uh -huh. Oh, you must be in another state. Yes, that's right. Because other states... Oh, that's something I had to announce. Yeah, we realized that, um, yeah, Melbourne is on a different timeline to other people. We've, we've got daylight savings. So we're one hour behind Queensland. Uh, one hour behind one hour in front? No, one hour in front, I think it is, yeah? Yeah, so, um, yeah, it probably looks like we're starting early, but... Yeah, and Mitchell's in Queensland. There you go. There you go. That explains it. Guys, it is one minute to nine. So nearly nine o'clock. Um, I'm happy to stay on and keep talking for a bit longer if you are. But if everyone's done, we can call it an evening. I will leave it up to you guys. Does anyone have a question? Ooh. Plastube is saying, would like to come on soon and talk about board peers too. Mate, Plastube, send me a message. Yeah, send me an individual message after this, and let's tee it up, man. I probably, I know you mentioned it last time. I probably forgot, man. 
uh, I get a lot, a lot of messages. So now send me, send me a message, man, and I'll and I'll look it up. I will definitely look it up. Matthew saying good job, thank you, Matt, for the comments. If you do really, really have a job site or a site we can go and work on, uh, Matt, that we can do our expo on, yeah, hit me up as well. Yeah, Plastube, definitely send me a message, man, because uh, and if I don't get back to you, keep trying, man. Just just keep doing it. Chris saying it's good stuff. Thank you very much, Chris. Oh, it's been a while, man. It has been a while. Um, we will have to do a catch up soon. But um, yeah, guys, I'm gonna go. It's nine o'clock. Everyone has to go work tomorrow. Um, I know it's also a school night, so if you've got kids, you probably want to go and see them off before they go to bed, unless they're already in bed. But um, yeah, definitely. Um, thank you very, very much to everybody that um, has joined me this evening and for everyone that joins me regularly as well look out for my live sessions during the week as well so while i'm operating i usually go live as well that's on earth on um tiktok and instagram um and like i said most of the time it's on tiktok because during the week i see for some reason instagram doesn't get as busy but sunday nights instagram kills it so thank you very very much plus tube yeah hit me up man and we'll have a bit of a chat um, if you're doing traffic management or if you're in a low loader or uh, float machines around, even if it's in like a, like a regular little tow truck, hit me up, man. I want to talk to you guys and get you on to hear your opinions on um, and share, you know, share some of your stories with us about how it is in, uh, traffic, in the traffic management world and in floating machines. Um, and also, if you've got a piling business, hint, hint, um, also hit me up as well the person will know who I'm talking about uh, Matt thank you very much for offering some places to us everyone else thank you I'm not going to keep um, chatting here if you haven't already done so make sure you go to Earthworks Hub on YouTube um, TikTok Facebook Instagram all the things Spotify Apple like subscribe follow share the shit out of it to everyone Let's get this thing massive, man. Um, go on to the earthworkshub.com.au website and sign in and register yourself so that way you remember as well. And if you've got a business and you want everyone to know about it in the industry, also list your business on there. If you've got a tip site, if you've got an event coming up, um, if you're looking for workers, you can advertise all that on Earthworks Hub. Go in and see it. If you want to buy yourself some merch like these bucket hats up here, like I said, they're a hot seller at the moment. So summer's here. Get yourself one of these bucket hats or any of the merch that I've got on that store and make sure you post it up. Um, also, yes, yeah, some big announcements coming, so keep your eyes open. Thank you once again. Have yourselves an awesome week. Thanks for joining. Good night, everyone. Take care.